Well, our next guest says the energy rally is just the beginning. Let's go off the charts with Chris Verona, Strategus Research Partners, to find out why. Hey, Chris, what are you looking at? Hey, Melissa. Yeah, we brought along crude with us to start here. And what I think is really notable is the last month uh, of price action. Over 20 days, oil goes 73 to 63. And then in a matter of about a week, it makes it all up. That is bull market price action. And when you think about this in context of the last two years, we're showing you here the three-month low line. So the lowest price crude has made over the last three months. We haven't even hit this line. So crude hasn't made a three-month low in more than a year. That is characteristic of an uptrend, uh, not a downtrend. And when we think about some of the stocks here, this is the XLE going back the last 10 years. XLE peaked relative to the S&P almost 10 years ago to the day in June of 2008, underperforms by 65 over the last 10 years. That's about as bad as you get when you look historically at some of the worst sector declines. So we think the worst days for the energy stock are behind them uh, at this point. And then in the very near term, if we look at the XLE, higher low, higher low, higher low, right on the verge of breaking out back above 78. We think ultimately this goes to 85. I would echo the view that EMP is how you want to play this. We brought along two names. This is EOG, really right on the verge of coming out of this very big base, and it's outperforming the sector. So we have a leader, a very good chart. We think it acts well here. And then lastly, this is Oxy, another name right on the verge of coming out of this very big base. You get this one above 80, you're looking at a $100 stock. So we think crude up. We think E&P is how you play it. Chris comes over. Nobody Come on. Yeah. Come oh, on over. Well, Chris. Again, a statement, not a question. Michelle will bring the chair Ultimately, in. can we do anything about it, guys? No. I mean, do you guys should vote no, and I'll just ignore you. All right, and it's a good thing. Chris. Good to see you. So you brought up the chart of the XLE, but then you said the way to play it are the E and P names. So I sure. presume that the XOP as a chart versus the XLE looks much better. Exactly. And when you look at the XLE, you have to remember what the weights are. And you have a lot of big names that really haven't participated in that XLE. When you start to go to the XLP, that's when you're getting EOG, Marathon, Oxy. That, I think, is where the alpha is found in this group. It's been true the last six months. We think it's true the next six months. So, Chris, looking at some of those, it yeah. implies you're saying higher oil prices. Mm -hmm. I look at the chart, I see 80 bucks maybe as resistance, and then 90. Is that what you're thinking on price of oil? 82, 83 has been our target here. I think what's notable in our client meetings, how few people think it's going there. I, I don't even think most people realize that we're back to 71, 72 dollar crude here. So, I think sentiment is on our side here. Brent already back to 76, 77 right now. So, the trend here is up. I love how it digested the news from last weekend, right? That could have been portrayed as bearish news for crude. Two days, boom, right back at the highs. That's how bull market instruments act. What has been the relationship of light between crude and the U.S. dollar? Weak. And historically, frankly, it's been weak, too. There are periods where it matters. I would be hesitant drawing too many big conclusions about U.S. dollar strength uh, and crude not going up. I would be very that skeptical old of that. That that's out the window for at least this A lot period. of things we hear in this business when you back test them really aren't true. That's one of them. Well, if you think about what the dollar's done, so the dollar's had about a 6% rally off the floor. Um, during that time, we've gotten a big move in crude. I, I think you have seen the dollar, because again, oil, why did this happen? Because oil prices are priced in dollars typically. It's why a lot of the producers around the world want to see oil priced in even Chinese yuan, why they open their futures market. But, but bottom line here is, I totally agree that the EMP names are the ones that are most levered to oil prices. Look at the Permian basket, too. Look at, look at like a Diamondback ticker, FANG, which is an mm. interesting mm -hmm. ticker guy. Um, ultimately, you know, I think those are the ones that make a lot of sense here. I think those are the ones that are totally levered to this move right now. Chris, have you looked at the oil field services relative to these and how do they compare? Yeah, you know, listen, I think if we look at a Halliburton or a Schlumberger, they're probably washed out enough to take a shot uh, on the long side. I'm not convinced they're going to emerge as the leaders in the group. So if we're playing for absolute numbers and we're looking for a shot for something that's washed out, not a bad spot to poke around, but probably not your leaders yet. Chris, thank you. Thank you. Chris Verone. Guy, what's your favorite pick in the energy sector? Halliburton. I think that if you look at valuation, look at where it stopped on the downside and look at where it could rally, I think Halliburton's very interesting. But we mentioned at the top, I'll say it again, anadarko petroleum, as levered a play as there is, in my opinion, still has room, despite the fact that it's had a tremendous run, still has room to the upside.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.